the cock 45 here with one of my very favorite rifles the m1a springfield beautiful gun fun to shoot oh i love this gun haven't had it out for a while well i like it and you've seen the, the socom 16 uh here at the compound same gun but a lot shorter right a little stubby uh version of the m1a and a lot of people have a hard time deciding you know which is the perfect length for them uh, myself included and i've really come to decide that there must be kind of a happy medium somewhere you know this long gun the really short one there's got to be a compromise and i think i found one look here yes see the difference we have the scout model as you knew right <laughs> you knew what was coming this is the uh, m1a scout squad and it has an 18 inch barrel so it's a little bit longer than the socom but uh, not nearly as long as uh, that nice rifle okay pretty gun look at that wood we appreciate springfield armor sending this as a tne gun john and i were at shot show and we were uh as i always am i'm always uh, salivating over over the guns and uh at the springfield booth because they have all these versions you know of the uh, the m1a and i'm never really really sure which one i like the most but i i always come back to picking up the scout models uh now they come in a lot of different uh, stocks and sometimes i'm not crazy about the stock uh configuration or color or material maybe but uh, they're all, they all feel good to me. They feel kind of like uh, the right length. And uh, so I requested one when we got back in the walnut stock. <laughs> I'm not going to battle with it. I don't think, I hope. <laughs> and so the fiberglass or the, the polymer stock, uh, whatever it's made of, wasn't quite as important to me. I, the, in a way, these are just beautiful old battle rifles you know so that's why i put the m14 stock on that one you know, it came with a polymer stock which in a lot of ways is more practical lighter i guess and uh but i don't know these old they're like a garand in a way you know they are an upgraded garand basically and uh i don't know they just need a walnut stock and i mean to tell you it's a good day when you've got a beautiful rifle like this to shoot okay I had fired at some. I got the sights, I think, pretty close to on. It was shooting uh, uh, seriously low, I put it that way. And, and in fact, the windage was a little bit off. But I think I got it to where I can at least hit that two liter right there with it, you think? So let's put one in. Yeah, it's brand new. Safety's right there, as you know, on the uh, M14, the M1A gets criticized because you have to put your finger in the trigger guard to uh, get the safety off. But uh, by and large, it's right there in the handy position. So it doesn't bother me too much. So the big difference is you got the scout uh, squad length and you've got the, the rail here. So you can put a, uh, an extended uh, eye relief scope on there if you want to, or a red dot. We may do that for a chapter two. Not sure. It does have a muzzle brake on it, so and it's hot, so I'm not going to mess with it too much. But instead of a uh, flash hider, we've got a muzzle brake on this model. Typically, I don't like muzzle brakes. They're way too noisy, way too much blast. But I, this one doesn't seem too bad yet. I, I may change my mind, but it doesn't seem too bad. So, what should we do? Something easy to begin with, like a 12 ounce drink. <laughs> how's that okay and uh how about a pot i'm having a little trouble with the sight here in the sun but uh there <laughs> oh, there's a 12 ouncer that got away let's uh i'm gonna move down a little bit and get out of the get the sun off the rear sight there we go and i'm gonna go across the hill uh, let's try that red plate on the right boom That I knew. Boy, that's sweet. I'm gonna go to the other one. Oh, 
And there's a little bit of cinder activity over there on that barrel. I can't see it too well, but... Yeah, that was it. <laughs> I'll tell you. I knew that was all. This thing is a sweet shooter. Let's try a two liter here. And it's empty. If you've never fired the, the M1A, M14, you might have in your basement an actual M14. If you do, I hope you have paperwork for it. But, uh, uh, these guns, admittedly, they're not a SCAR-17, they're, they're, they're not some of the, I mean, it's old technology. You know, it's one of the criticisms you'll see if you prowl around some of the forums. There are people who just wouldn't have one of these. They would not want to depend on one of these. They really are. They'll criticize Springfield for using a, a cast receiver. Uh, and there are people who will pay big bucks and go to Fulton Armory, some places like that. I'm not familiar with all the sources. People who actually make uh, uh, milled receivers and and better parts, they think. Okay, and they, they probably are. I don't know. Whatever better means, you know. Kind of like a 1911. You get parts that are are out of like an Ed Brown or a, a, a Nighthawk or a Wilson Combat. You know, those Ed Lesper, where every piece of it is is uh, milled steel. You know, instead of MIM parts and cast parts and that sort of thing. Well, you might put those guns side by side and they both might last 100 years shooting a thousand rounds a week, you know, or the, the one with the MIM parts might fail. I don't know. Uh, so you've got that going, uh, with, you know, out there on the, on the Internet. And you know what I'm talking about if you're familiar with these, these firearms. Some people will, will, will uh, trash them for not being the very best they could be and going ahead and charging 3000 or 4000 for them. I think these run about uh, $1,500, $1,600. Uh, but that said, you know, I've had mine for about 20 years and uh, maybe it's more than 20 now, but I've not had any trouble with it, you know, so I don't know. If I'm going to battle, if I want to be dropped into Afghanistan or somewhere tomorrow, I probably would take my SCAR. These are a little bit heavy. Uh, there's some things about them, the way they function, a little bit ungainly, but man, they are sweet to shoot. And of course they have served us well. You know, I think the, the Navy still has M14s on board ship and, and uh, uh, the SEAL teams, I know, have carried those things. I don't know if they still do, but uh, they have served us well for a lot of years. All the differences in construction between those and the Springfield Armory, I'm not, I'm not sure of, but uh, they, these, these seem to work, you know. Uh, you know, I know people, there's a whole cottage industry of people upgrading these, just like with 1911s and uh, getting better parts for them, they think. So that's, that's just out there, just throwing that out, okay? Uh, one thing I was going to mention, though, and I fired a lot of firearms, you know, rifles, uh, 308, uh, big calibers and everything else. These things are just uh, soft shooters. They are sweet shooters. When I shot this uh, the other day for the first time, I was I was all geared up. Okay, this is 308. In fact, I got down on the bench because I wanted to put it on some paper and see where it hit. And so I get down there. All right, I got to remember now. I got a 308. This won't punch me. You know. And then I shot it. And it, oh, really? I mean, I almost. I mean, I felt it, but it was just n nothing. It was. It's like shooting the scar. To tell you the truth, uh, John and I were talking about that. I think he's fired it. In some ways, it's almost softer than shooting the SCAR, and the SCAR 17 is famous for having low recoil, you know, on the th with a 308 RAM, NATO RAM. But if you've never fired one, that that's something you uh, you, you just can't appreciate yet. But they're really soft shooters, and uh, no doubt about it. Ice gun classic. Uh, this will come off this rail if you don't like that, and you can. Uh, get the other you know, dust cover put over that so it's just like uh, the full length versions and all that kind of thing. If that bothers you, I don't know, I'd probably leave it open like that if it were mine because I might put a red dot on it, mess with it some or not. But the sights, one of the things about the M14, the M1A, it's famous for having great sights. And, uh, and you do, really do get a good sight picture with these guns. You can adjust windage and elevation all back here. And uh, you just feel like you can't miss with it. The, the couple of misses I had over there, I knew, I, I pulled the trigger too soon. I knew exactly where the sights were. I put the sights on pretty well because it was tending to hit exactly where I had that front sight. Imagine that. That's kind of what you want, isn't it? <laughs> Let's uh, see if I have any more ammo. Oh, I do. Yes. 
the old uh, M1A or M14 magazines. They're not light, but it's not meant to be safety on. Again, there's how your safety works. Let's put it on, put one in the chamber. Safety's on and put some ears on. I'll put a couple on that uh, paper target there. Okay, not going for the tightest grip in the world, but I just like to do that. Uh, I think I know where to hold. Ah, there's a 12 ouncer over there, still surviving. <laughs> and a two liter. <laughs> Does the job. Oh, look at that big pot sitting there, just mocking me. <laughs> yeah, take you down, buddy. Oh, another one. Nice. <laughs> oh, ooh, a 12 ouncer. That two liter. Oh, I want to shoot my steel there. Oh, there's one here close. <laughs> Don't need sights for that. Ah, there's one on top of that cinder block. Yeah, we've got plans for that cinder block. I'll put a couple more over there. Yeah, like I said, I'll put a couple more over there. <laughs> These are heavy. They they got some heft to them, especially with this. Uh, this wooden stock, but I just I just think it's a gorgeous rifle. It's a it's a beautiful it, a beautiful rifle. You know, again, these are kind of classic. There's not that much difference really between this and a Garand. You get right down to it. You know, the gas system was improved, and uh, of course you've got a detachable magazine, a few other changes maybe. But I mean, there's very much the same gun, kind of the same operation and bolt sights and everything. Just uh, they, they, they don't get the respect that the Garand does because they're not famous for being uh, the battle rifle of, of a major war. I guess that's that's the, the one of the big differences. And uh, I know I'm I'm being sacrilegious, but but I prefer this much prefer this over the Garand. Uh, my first Garand, I had trouble with the gas system and with the feeding. You know, it was frustrating. And uh, the the M 14 and when I kind of solve those problems is the way I look at it. Okay Again, if I had any trouble with mine uh, this one at all yet no no trouble with it uh, you know, So like I said there are people that will buy these and they will go to these outfits these aftermarket companies and they'll put three four thousand maybe five thousand dollars to get what they consider the perfect uh, M14 or M1A But uh, for me, I'm not going to battle. So I think this will probably do me just fine a couple more shots with it like I said John and I went through these and uh, slobbered over a few of them at the shot show <laughs> and uh, I was reminded again how much I it's safety on how much I like the the scout length uh, I just it just it's just a handy length and you know I'm not bothered by that flash of John might be if we finish here he might whoa let's get that off there but it doesn't seem as bad as like the, the scar and some others I've had uh, as far as a uh, muzzle brake, what I meant to say, because it's a, it's a muzzle brake. And maybe it does tame uh, the recoil a little bit. I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't just like shake your brain uh, like the scar, the one that comes on the scar does. So uh, not, a, not a big deal there. Kind of an interesting design. Uh, I, I don't I don't know of a lot negative about this gun because it's a size that I like in an M, M1A. I would I might send that one back. You think that would work? <laughs> and uh, put it in a box if it'll fit in a box and just keep that. I would really rather have I think this length. So it's appealing to me as long as it works and it's a pretty piece of wood. The only negatives really the big negatives are the negatives that the M14, the M1A has always had, you know, by and large. Uh, you know, your bolt release is kind of funky in a way. Uh, and, you know, uh, some people will, will will claim they're not all that reliable. I, I've not had any trouble with that. P 
people will complain about the safety, you know, being right there uh, in the trigger guard, more or less. And the overall breakdown, maybe. Some of the newer designs, like taking a SCAR apart completely is just pretty easy and amazing. Uh, a little more involved with these. But uh, and that's for, I think, when you, you're down in a prone position, especially, or you're bench resting, it kind of keeps the gun from, you know, moving up or down on your shoulder. So you've got that little wing there. But they're just nice. I, I can't criticize them too much. I've, I wouldn't have bought that one if I uh, didn't think pretty highly of them. Okay, so let's take a couple more shots at something here. One thing we've not done is shoot a couple of rounds pretty fast. Let's just uh, work on that burn barrel. I don't think it has enough holes in it. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Two liter. And you know what? Uh, needs a few rounds on it, or that cinder block. So I'm going to back up just a little bit here. And uh, let's see if we can chew it up. I'll try to start at the top. I can find my sight. There it is. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> Part of the appeal of the, uh, the M14, the M1A, the SCAR, the 308 NATO round. It does have some punch, no doubt about that. Yep, going low. Yep. Well, I tell you, if you hold it on there, uh, knock the plate down on the last shot. I guess that was uh, <laughs> that was indication that they needed to quit, right? empty the third the third mag oh uh, yeah these uh, uh th these are just fun to shoot uh the recoil impulse it is 308 but it's it's very mild and uh if you've never had one uh get somewhere and shoot one if you can uh i've had mine a long time i've taken it apart a lot of times and cleaned it maybe we'll do a cleaning video with one of these or a, a field strip just just for kicks you can see what they look like on the inside and uh, how they break down if you've not seen that before but uh this is a this is a nice link that's the the main reason we're even here i wanted to show you the the scout uh, uh link scout squad it's called uh not only is it the mid length but you've got this uh rail here so that you can uh, put uh you know red dot on there if you want to and they make scopes for those who don't know that are extended eye relief so you know in keeping with the scout rifle concept so you can be back here pretty far from the scope and it still works for you. It doesn't have to be up here on your, on your eye. So you can get a, an actual magnification scope if you want to. I'd probably put a red dot on it if I do anything uh, in that regard. But anyway, that's uh, the Springfield Armory's uh, Scout Squad rifle. And maybe what you consider an impractical stock, but it's pretty. And that's what I wanted. If I'm called up tomorrow to go battle somewhere, I'll just take my scar. But uh, this this kind of rifle really is fun to shoot and very appealing. So anyway, we appreciate uh, Springfield sending this to us and letting me mess it up and get it dirty and uh, you know make it a used gun before I send it back. It's, it is going to be hard to send back, I'll have to say. Uh, but it's a pretty rifle. I think I will send them the other one. Don't tell them, okay? They probably won't be able to tell a difference. Life is good.